Doesn't that not look scented? Is it supposed to look like that? Jabbers, 23 minutes. I want to be back. Because mm -hmm. I feel when my arms begin to heal. Oh, there is Jordan. What's going on, Britta? And I like you How long is this one? Eight minutes? Okay. Doable. In a way Wait, my grandfather's father uh, my grandfather's final invention. These three friends dinner Ooblu part three. What about part one? How you doing tonight, Jordan? How goes Summoner's War? Are you, uh, you, uh, what is it? What, what am I, what am I trying to say? Are you doing, uh, Rush Hour? I wish Rush Hour wasn't on Sunday, because I would do it every week. But I'm usually asleep before the tally hits. Why can't you see my beautiful face? Ah! Well... Other than the fact that I'm completely shirtless, <laughs> um, I won't be using a face cam tonight. We'll be reading off creepy stories. There's the baby. How you doing, baby? When my arms begin to Found a letter from my stalker. That sounds dope. Where should I join voice chat? Um, probably gonna do um Steam, Steam voice chat. So there's some back and forthing in this story. Holy, it's kind of long. Thirteen minutes isn't too too bad. We're gonna have to find out a turn order when we uh, we start doing these. Me and uh, Anarchy last time we were doing them uh, like four paragraphs at a time and then switch. So yeah, it's good. Uh, I'm in a new guild. They offered me 4K crystal. Wow, so join them since I demolished them by yourself in Siege, but I said I would join for free. Oh. Oh, come on. Let's see those mus those muscles. Mm. I know baby wants to see those muscles. I would, but it, it's against TOS terms of service. And someone called me ugly yesterday, so I'm a little emotional. No, I'm kidding. Ooh. Um, we'll send the voice request here. A 
in my trench coat. Hi. Hello. Hello. Just give me a second. I need to put the headphones. Okay. I need to turn down <clears throat> this over here. Can you hear me now? Yeah, of course. I need, to I need to change my nickname. What, from the baby? That's baby maker. What, you don't make babies? No. <laughs> I can hear myself. You can hear yourself. Do you have the stream open still? Okay. Oh, there's the anarchy. There's anarchy. Did we just say the same thing? You too, uh, too lazy to put on a shirt. Heck yeah, I'm too lazy to put on a shirt. Baby bullying, Baby bullying news. What the fuck? Actually, I did some bullying news this week, but it's veggie bullying news. I don't think you would like it. Actually, it's pretty tasty, so he would like Jordan, it. where are you from? I never asked. I know you're somewhere over overseas. I never asked him. Well, how are you doing, babe? Good. Uh, managed to sleep until half past 10 this morning, but only because of... The, no, 11, half past 11. But the hour changed, so it was half past ten. Oh, so you didn't have to work today? I had. Yeah, I started late. I just arrived home when I talked to you. Okay. It's from the UK. Unknown. Under conditions. It's with part of the UK, Jordan. <laughs> pretty close to me. Maybe he's your neighbor. Are you no, because I'm in Ireland and he's in the UK. So, I mean, it's still one hour apart. Well, 40 minutes maybe. I don't know. Depending. So Ireland is not a part of the UK? Mm, well, not the Republic of Ireland where I am. The Northern Ireland, yes. Hmm. South London. Ah, uh, so he's got, one of, he's got one of those accents. Ooh. I love a man with an accent. <laughs> All right, baby. So I have a plethora of stories to choose from. Do I have to read? I mean, that's why you're here. <laughs> I'm. I'm here to hear spooky. Oh, you could have just stayed in the stream for that one, BB. Nah, I'm joke. Nah, I'm I'm home alone. Don't make me scared. Oh, I mean. If you're just here to listen, I would suggest not I'm Portuguese. not being in the voice call. That way you can hear the music because I'm gonna play music too, and I like to I like to read it very dramatically. And you can ask Anarchy too. Mm, that's nice. If I drink another glass of wine, I'll be very dramatic as well. <laughs> Dramatica. But why isn't Anarchy joining? She says she's here to draw, so I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Christmas feast. Smile dog. That's a classic. The well. John. Crying numbers. Ooh, the ragman sounds dope. 28 minutes. That does not sound dope. No, thank you. The man who couldn't see. Twisted Teddy, the bus, Mr. Leaves, scratching. I'm trying to do stories that aren't like 12 hours long. I'm actually tempted. Uh, I've been watching streams, like parts of streams from GTA 5, and I'm laughing nonstop. I, I didn't know it was so funny. You 
because I only played like many, many years ago, like the first. No, actually, yeah, I don't know if I played the first one. And now it's so funny. <laughs> like they all make these different voices and and role. You probably never played the first one. Not many people have. Uh, it's actually a misconception on what people think the first GTA is. If it was 3D, then you didn't play the first one. Is it? Is it? It has to be really old, otherwise I didn't play. Nah, GTA is not too old. Let me Google it real quick. I mean, I guess I can do the. I think I'm confusing with another one. Uh, GTA. Cause the first one was for like the PlayStation. Creepy pasta. Oh my god. It's almost time. Now, if it was PlayStation, I didn't play. Yeah, it, it was 1997. Maybe my brother played. Yeah, so my, I think my brother played it because it was in the 90s that I, I was playing these games. And it was from a top-down view. It, it was not 3D at Maybe all. Maybe I played it on my brother's PlayStation. Maybe. And I also played the other one before that one, the, you know, the Carmageddon? That you just had to run people over by car, with cars. That's so stupid. Mm -hmm. um. uh, yeah, Ty, can you invite her to the, to the chat, please? Or should I? Actually, we need to make a group. I think I can do it as well. I think we have loads of groups where the three of us. Are. I got rid of half of those. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just. Okay, what did I do? Groups, 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 groups. Okay, I'm switching over chats. Oh, she's already gone. Ah! We're gonna end this here. And then, bam, here I am. Hello. Yeah, so Anarchy can join this one and then she can be stupid. So she can be a nerd. It's just the three of us, huh? Or? Yep, just the three of us. Anarchy. Anarchy. Maybe she's getting her microphone. Behind you. Behind you. Behind you. Gasp. I'm trying to find like multiple stories. Hello. SMR. <laughs> Are we whispering tonight? We we might be whispering tonight. I can't even hear. There she go. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I miss your voice. I mean, I, I heard you streaming, but it's not the same. I'm not talking. Oh. Oh. How's your doggies? Uh oh. Where the doggies are? She's playing. I can see what she's doing. She's playing car mechanic simulator. Yeah. Or J Pod, you are you are working for the enemy instead of spooky. Oh, nice. You've been caught, Anarchy. You need to make money. Yeah. I I tried to hire you too to make uh, Mexican food, but you were successful. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, I'm joking. So we need to open this. You need to teach me. I wasn't here the first time. Yes, ladies. You must open that. <coughs> I'll open it. Inside. I'm afraid already. Should we make creepy voices though? <laughs> I mean, how? What do I do now? I open. You it. open it. You make sure it's the same story that I'm seeing and the same story Anarchy is seeing. Yep. Which one? Should I open? Well, I thought you opened it already. <laughs> oh, mute. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. So you guys see the first paragraph. It begins, I shouldn't, should have known uh -huh. something was wrong. Yes. Okay. So now that we... Oh my god, should I be nervous? <laughs> uh, nervous. Or should I be drunk? I think I should be drunk. I thought you were already drunk. No, I started 
start I ended up doing the first class because I don't like like I wasn't doing anything. I mean I just started now. I was waiting for Mr. Tide to get out of the shower, but that took like one hour. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he took forever. Hey. It was getting pretty to be spooky. I, I have to look pretty too. Hello. <laughs> You're ready to oh. Aww. He's very pretty. Thank you. And now what? So now we decide on our reading patterns. I guess I just do what you guys tell me to. Just uh, keep in mind that English is not my first uh, language, and that I'm drinking wine. So together, just good luck. I was drunk. So. Aren't you drinking anarchy? I can't drink. Uh, okay. She's underage. <laughs> Nerd. Okay. Okay, tell me the rules. So, since so baby is new, me and Anarchy can read the longer stuff, and then you see Nine. those things in uh, quotation marks, baby? Uh, I think like, so. the first one is, yeah. but daddy, I'm really awake. Yeah. So, stuff like that, you can read those. Oh. Yeah, my glass is almost fancy. Anyway. Oh my gosh. Okay, so y'all are ready? I'm actually gonna get my mouse ready. Uh-huh. I was born ready, baby. Ooh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So anarchy, how do you want to do this? Every like, every like this, <clears throat> the same every four. Every, three every what? Yeah. Every three chapter or what? Or every um, paragraph. Yeah, totes. Yep. Or one paragraph and then switch. They are pretty lengthy, huh? Okay, that works out. And if it's like really short, uh, I don't know. If it's like really short, we can have baby do those. Sure. Yeah, I can. I can read, you guys. I I need to tell you something. I actually can read English. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I mean, I mean I, this one. Should I make a spooky voice or a scary voice? Um, whatever. You can act whatever. <laughs> yep. If you guys think that I'm doing the wrong voice, you, you tell me more uh, baby, more uh, like spooky, or like uh, creepy, or hey spooky. lurk BB. Try to correct it. Okay. Okay. What? What? what All right. Happen? So, we'll have anarchy start us off. Ooh. Okay, so I read just the first paragraph. Just the actually, you know what? Baby can start us off, and then anarchy. Yeah. Okay. And then. Will. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll let we'll let baby come. Yeah, yeah. And when do I stop? Like you guys interrupt me or? So whenever whenever that last sentence stops, that's when the next person will pick up. You'll see. Okay. Okay. All right. I should known something was wrong. What happened that night was fucked up, no doubt. And I had a lot to deal with, a lot of my mind. But how did I not notice something was so obvious? Something that I was staring. Staring at me right in the fucking face. What the fuck is wrong with me? Uh, did I continue? <laughs> go on, Aki, go! Yes, Belina reads the, the little... Oh, I'm sorry! I was actually okay. on stream seeing the reaction of the, the fans. But Daddy, I'm really awake, I promise! She pleaded with me as I carried her up to her room in my arms. Oh, really? I chuckled playing with her. 
Then what's your middle name? I could almost hear the gear spinning in her tired little head as she desperately tried to find the answer. The one thing that she needed to watch the suddenly climactic conclusion of the long truth. If needed, she could remain conscious long enough. She pulled a funny face and guessed. Pretty? I laughed and touched her nose. Alright, take me to bed. <laughs> The movie had been hard for her. She was only five after all, and she had to grow up a lot faster than any child should ever have to. But she was so smart for her age, so understanding. She understood why we had to move so far away from all her family and friends to this unfamiliar house and even more unfamiliar city. She understood why she couldn't see her mother anymore, that she wasn't the same, that she had forgotten how to love after the drugs took her, took their hold on her. She understood that she probably would never see her old friends again and she'd have to make new ones. She somehow even understood why I suddenly had to start taking the little white pills from the little orange bottles every morning and afternoon. Ooh, hold on. I lost my place, boys and girls. <laughs> the stress of a long drawn out separation from my wife and waking up every morning to see the shell of the woman I once loved and broken my little my heart literally. If my daddy, oh yeah, go ahead baby, sorry, that's you. <laughs> if my daddy gets too excited, his heart explodes. I'd hear her telling some other girls one day when I was picking her up from school, much to their fascination, not quite right, bless her. But it was amazing that she was so close because we'd never even spoken about it before. Don't worry. We'll watch the rest in the morning together, I promise. I reassured her as I... Oh, sorry, I thought I, I had to read something. No, yeah, yeah, it's your turn, sorry. Ah, okay. I reassured her as I took her into bed and gave her a kiss on the cheek. But I must warn you, in the, at the very end, Mula, don't tell me. She shouted as she buried her head in the pillow and made the classic I can't hear you sounds. I laughed again, told her I love her, as I always did, turned off the lights, and left the door open a crack before going back downstairs to watch some shitty late TV, uh, late night TV. It got to that point in the night where the adverts from stretching super hoses or pop-up gazebos begin to run together with a fake tarot readings and over the phone spiritual guidance. And I really thought I might die or at least, very least, become brain damaged to the point of inconsistence if I watched another second. When it even the TV strippers started putting their clothes back on, you know it's time to hit the can. Switching the TV off with the remote, I quickly stood up and patted myself down to make sure I hadn't indeed shot myself. I got the all clear and started up the stairs, fumbling with my pills, turning off the lights as I went and prepared myself for bed. That's when I heard the scream, that bone shielding blood-curdling scream, that pain-gurgling scream, Susie's scream. 
I launched my pills into the air and I sprinted up the stairs. I burst into her room, fainting, scanning around for any sight in danger, and I found none. Content that the room was empty, save for myself and her kneeled at the bed and stroked her face. What's wrong, honey? I asked her gently. She just sat up in bed, frozen, paralyzed, almost pointing one shaking finger towards the foot at her bed and clutching her other hand close to her chest. This wasn't really any surprise to me. Yes, she was a strong girl, but she wasn't entitled to her share of childlike monster in the wall type fears that everybody goes to at that age. I've been woke up many times in the small hours of the morning by her cries of monster in my wardrobe or ghost in my floorboards, the latter of which ended with me doing some weird food stomping dance ritual of words of evil spirits. One that had become more and more frequent late of late was man on my window, which was the one of you I actually took it seriously. But luckily, there was never was. At least, not that I saw. This time was different though. She hadn't shouted or any of those usual complaints. She shouldn't. She shouted anything. She had just screamed. That's when I should have known, right then. Right then and fucking there, it was that I should realize that I was too late. That the worst had already happened. Wardrobe? I asked loudly, suddenly searching the doors open to reveal nothing but clothes and hangers. No, nope, no monsters in there. I concluded. Unless it's an invisible event. I yelled, unleashing a flurry of kung fu moves into the empty closet. No, Ivan is not there either. Then I bent down and sta started grabbing my necklace on the floor. Mm, floorboard sounds empty to me. I stood up again, smiling and looked at Susie. Her cold, terrified face was following me around the room. Her face, the picture of absolute fury. A quivering finger unmoved from the end of her bed. The smile quickly melted from my face. My ghostbuster routine usually at least made her chuckle. I knew something had seriously killed her. And whatever it was, she thought it was under the bed. Down there? mind to her gesturing to the floor under where she sat she nodded silently then withdrew her hand and clenched it tight to her chest like the other got down on her knees put my hands on the floor and prepared my scariest words to trying to scare away whatever imaginary creature lived there i quickly brought my head down to the floor level i was just about to shout under the mattress when what i saw made the breath catch in my throat i felt nauseous Terrified and infatuated all in the same instant. But that's not when I had in my heart attack. He was laying there, totally naked and erect, in an expanding pool of his own piss. His wrinkly, curled, wart covered skin was stuck to the floor, his stinky sweat, and I could see his yellow, rotting teeth, the, the few he had, leaning pitifully towards me through his cracked, arid lips. He must have been in his late sixties, and his greasy, silvering hair, where he wasn't bald, it, it fell down over his face in messy knots and clumps. In one veiny, clawed hand, he held a bloodied steak knife, rusted with use, a large stained burlap sack in the other. He was under my daughter's bed. He was under my daughter's fucking bed. He started, half crying. The sound of his bones crunching in the door frame were not nearly as disturbing as his frenzied, frenzied animalistic screams. About 15 minutes later, his near lifeless trunk was getting loaded in the back of an ambulance, thankfully floated and under heavy guard, and the police who arrived on the scene were filling me in what would happen while a medic bandaged my bloody, misshapen knuckles. Using Susie's bedroom, 
I broken his jaw, his nose, and globe of his left eye socket. Crack his skull, broken six ribs, and separated his spinal column at the sixth vertebra. When the hingle splint splintered at the door fell from the frame, I resorted to using my fish and had shattered all the nine of his teeth off crush and windpipe and left him with a major concussion, all which made identifying him any way very difficult, mainly due to the fact that his newly swollen and disfigured face could now have been pulled joyously and whistling from high spirits. He would have to wait for his finger prints, likely intact despite most of his digits being mangled and snapped. To be put through the, this database, to be sure, but they believed I had just caught one Jeb Roberts, the perpetrator of a series of weird, weird murders taking place across the city. He had entered the house by cleaning up the guttering and entering a slightly open upstairs window. Reports indicated that he would have staked out the house. It was that the night Susie's window, I could be sure. Before breaking in, dragging the child with strong trilomethanes, and then harvesting their skin, bones and internal organs, using them to fashion creepy dolls and marionettes from dead, rotten flesh, leaving nothing but the soap hat of fat and muscle loving top with twenty little teeth. I felt sick. I couldn't believe Susie had almost become a victim of that manic cunt. I remembered watching a news report about the guy not three days ago. It wasn't an action means of what he was, but the general one size fits all terms such as pedophile, murder, yeah. greed, child killer, communist, server of Satan, and straight and fuck up psycho. We're getting thrown around a lot. The officers commended me for my brave and valiant action and assured me that if this was the last guy and he lived long enough to stand trial, he would be getting nicely acquainted with Hold on. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, hold on. Pause. Pause. <laughs> hey, J-Pod, thank you for the host, brother, or that raid. Hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me do it right. Let me, let me do it right. Thank you for the shout out. I was like trying to do it and I was like, fuck, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. Why is it not working? The shout out? I, what did I, do? I don't have alerts in that scene. Oh, come on. Now it won't even show up on my recent. That's dumb. It's not even showing the soul. I did it. Ah, that's why it didn't work. Sorry. Oops. Well, can I do like a test raid and then say that that was from J-Pod? Let's do it. Let's do a test raid. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's not showing up in my recent ones. Test raid. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh my gosh, J Pod with nine hundred and forty-two. Oh my gosh! I didn't see anything. Oh my god! Oh my J Pod, that is so. Oh, no, I'm seriously though. Thank you, J Pod, for the raid. Show up on mine. What? I, I'm gonna refresh it. Well, I didn't get the alerts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't have alerts on that scene. You just raided yourself. Didn't know you were into that, bro. Thank you for that raid. Welcome in, everyone, from J-Pot Stream. I'm Mr. Typhlosion, and me, myself, and I, <laughs> Baby Bolinia, and Distorted Anarchy are reading scary stories if you guys want to stay here and listen. It's more drunk stories. And the... More drunk stories. Anyway, I... another glass and I can't breathe anymore, so let's do it. <laughs> you... <laughs> Your last sentence was, they said that was all right, and I could bring her down to the station whenever you're ready. Yeah. Yeah. Me? Uh -huh. that, that was the last one you read, right? Yeah. 
Okay, cool. Thank you again, J-Pod, for that raid, man. I really do appreciate you, fam. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, here we go. You guys ready? Okay. Five, four, three, two. Cue music. Give me new music. <clears throat> In hindsight, it wasn't the best idea, but I decided to wait until all the cops had cleared out. The investigators had taken their photos and left. The paramedics all piled into their car and sped away. Hold on. I had to change the scene. And sped away at the sound of wailing sirens was no longer audible in the distance. <laughs> About an hour in total. Then I sat Susie down on the couch and decided we needed to talk about what just happened. I explained to her that a nasty man had gotten into the house, that he wanted to take her away, but that it wasn't all right because daddy had been there to protect her. And that, and that man was never ever coming back. She placed a hand on my cheek and nodded. That nod she always did to show me she had understood everything I had just said and everything I hadn't. As the first tears I had seen in almost five years started to roll down her cheeks. It's all right, Susie. I comforted her. You don't have to cry. She still said nothing, but I didn't question it much. I hugged her lovingly and she nestled her head into my shoulder, but she hardly hugged me back. Her arms were still clamped tight against her chest, as if she was trying to hide something valuable. Afraid she could lose it at a second. Susie, darling, what's that in your hand? She looked suddenly apprehensive, and that fearful expression crossed her face again. It's okay, you can show me. It's all right, I promise. Only then, only... Did I put two and two together and work out what had happened? I failed my daughter, the girl that meant everything to me, because I was too fucked in to see what was right in front of my face. How fucking stupid can you be? Now I'm gone, and she's all on your own, on her own. I was meant to protect her. I was meant to protect her. Anarchy. I think we need volume up on baby. Is she speaking parts of the story? <laughs> I can't hear the other nerd. No, I was whispering. I was whispering. Uh, was that oh no, you probably can barely hear Anarchy. Anarchy, turn your volume up, BB. I can't do anything when it's like this. I hear her well. Well, I have headphones. Um, me too. Um, what you'll have to do is you'll have to open up uh, the Steam. You know the one where you can see like your friends. You'll see like a little gear by the X button at the top right. Yeah. So you click that and you'll see voice, click voice. And then you, you'll see input volume and an output volume. It's all half and half. We'll raise your input volume up. Input up. Yeah. Okay, I put it up. Is that one? Better. What is J-Pod saying that I'm speaking too loud? You're probably speaking too loud, baby. <laughs> A little. He said, we need volume up on baby. Can you hear baby now, J-Pod? Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I didn't do anything different. Oh, you know, I'm like watching the stream and I can't hear baby. You can't hear baby? No. 
You can't hear me? You can't hear me either. I can hear you very well, both of you. Hmm. Alright. I heard you. You can hear. I mean, everyone knows that I use the microphone from the laptop, but I'm not there, whispering, I can hear I'm now. talking actually loud. Okay, we can hear everybody now. I can hear it. Okay. Sweet. Did you have to fix it? I had to turn it up way higher than what it was. So maybe it was his options, not my voice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Pro no, streamer yeah. people. Pro streamer. Woo! Pro. Pro. So I guess no one heard the story, huh? <laughs> I guess we have to do another one. We have to do oh my like God. 12 of these. Uh, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna go to the kitchen. 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 That's the, the next one. Ooh, don't start already, music. <clears throat> Make it pro, bro. I heard Mr. Ty's part, then like whispering, and was like, um. Did you get it, Anarchy? Holy crap, I can't. I can what? Oh, uh, let me look. I think Baby left her headphones near uh, her computer. You want to get something fast? <gasps> I heard this one in a, in a podcast. You said you heard this one on a podcast? Yeah. Yeah, boy. Yeah. I need to go wash my clothes. I'm going to be up like hella late. Well, I mean, it's only like 8.30. If I throw them in a wash, they should probably be done washing by like 10. Just throw them in the dryer. Whenever that baby comes back, we can start the next one. It's called, mm -hmm. My Grandfather Was an Inventor. Gonna lurk, but we'll be listening. Gonna check on in on Serene and do some laundry. All right, J-Pod, thank you again for that raid, buddy. My nightbot's crazy. Man, so many conventions going on. Conventions? <laughs> Yeah, conventions, like comic book and shit. I think KameaCon was uh, this weekend. WonderCon is like this weekend, that, this days. Uh oh, my friend posted a new track. Ah. <sighs> yeah, she used that one. That one was. so trash I hate hearing like my beats that I really didn't try too hard on like don't listen don't look at me yeah. I'm like oh my gosh they really use that one dang where's that baby at getting wine yo she getting crunk that's what's happening by next story she's gonna be slurring <laughs> Shoot. Let's play some music while we wait for the baby. Too bad you can't hear the music, Anarchy. I think it would help. I have the the stream up. Uh, okay. I love this gift or gif or whatever you want to call it because it just loops perfectly. Mm hmm It's spooky. It's spooky. I wonder if I can darken it. No, leave it. It looks good like that. Um. Because I can, like, I can do some cool stuff to it. Like, I can do that to it. Make it look super pixelated. Ugh. <laughs> My eyeballs. <laughs> My eyeballs! I think we lost her. I think we lost the baby. Someone's in a rescue party. 
So I'm just hearing myself in that echo and I hate how my voice sounds. I feel like that sometimes. I have a thick ass accent. It's not bad. Hey, oh, yes it is, boy. Yes it is. Uh, it's not that bad. I've heard worse. I heard ones that like, hola, senor. I am here to. That's not what I said! <laughs> <laughs> I am here, you calling about the job? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the stuff, stuff I'm used to. And I'm like, what? What did he say? <laughs> I sound when I stream. I bet you people are like, um, does this person speak English? Because I don't understand anything. <laughs> Hello, welcome to McDonald's. May I take your orders? Uh, it, it, you know, uh, it, can I have the, uh, the number? Uh... <laughs> uh, even when I read, the big accent come out, comes out. I'm back. We hear the baby returning. Yeah. Cause the the whole time it was like this. What? What did I do? Oh my god! No, we could just we can hear you like pick up your headset or whatever. Because it's a laptop, you can hear everything. Get it's a on my bed, and you guys are sitting down on the cold, and I'm in my bed in the morning. Wow. Maybe there's someone behind, under my bed. Oh my god! Maybe should it's I look? Guide. Actually, there's no space. Okay, babe. Maybe behind the the window. So I'm gonna need you yeah? to click on that next story. Creepy. Uh, the title should be my grandfather. My finals invention. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So we can do the same um, pattern. Mm -hmm. And uh oh, this one is smaller. Thank God, because when it when I have to read too much, I start getting lost because <laughs> it's too much dark and white at the same time. So for this one, um, and probably from here on out, if there's like dialogue in it, that person who's on the paragraph can just read it. That way, we're not like, hey, you read this part. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, I guess. Oops, I am not playing creepypasta music anymore. I was totally playing normal music. Wow, how dare. Okay. It's supposed to be scary, you know? Yeah. All right, so I'll start it off. What was the order? Was you and then Anarchy or you and then me? Um, Forgot. All right, we'll just keep the same order then. So it was uh... Baby, Anarchy, then me. Yeah. It was me mm -hmm. first? Oh, yeah. okay. All right. My grandfather was an inventor. All his life, he's been tinkering with something, either taking, either taking something that existed and changing it, making it to someone brand new, or at the very least different, or inventing something entirely from spare parts. And while nothing he invented was ever, ever heard shakering, it was always one of my greatest delights, ever since I was a little girl, to see what he made. Childhood visits to his home would always begin or end with me sitting on the couch. A look of absolute fascination on my tiny face as he showed off whatever gadget he put together in his workshop this time round. It was like having my own personal Santa who worked all year round to fill my eight-year-old mind with wonder and glee. My older sister was likewise excited. No matter how much she tried to hide the excitement, it filled her with probably in an effort to appear cooler or more mature than myself. And while because of real life getting in the way, the visit became fewer and fewer the older we got. We would always make time to see him at least a few times a year, and every time he would have something new to show us, he really was a genius. I should add that it isn't meant to imply something horrible happened to him. I'm sure some days he, wish, he wishes it had, that it had been him who had wound up in the hospital instead of my sister, but no, he went into his sleep and I hope his passing was a peaceful one. 
Even all these years later, I can't bring myself to be angry about what happened. I can't bring myself to hate him. He had no idea what would happen. No clue how things would pan out. He knew something was wrong. Oh yes. He, he wasn't some dawdling old fool. He knew the first time he looked through them the, that something was wrong. But he thought it was something only a little odd. Something unsettling and curious perhaps, but not anything dangerous. Not anything that would harm anyone. I think deep down, I think <laughs> he's just wanting to know that he wasn't crazy. He wanted to be sure that he wasn't seeing things. And who can blame him? There were three of us last year. Myself and my girlfriend, Justin, and my sister, Joanne, we were both used to our grandfather being bursting with energy to show us whatever he put together, his oddly subdued moods, when he came up to the door to greet us, came as a bit of surprise. I was a little disappointed, in fact, as I've been hoping Justin would get to share his experience of having a new invention demonstrated before our awe struck his eyes. With only stare dating the year, so it would be the first chance she got to see the kind of things I've been telling her about. The day passed pleasantly enough as we chatted, enjoyed lunch and watched the television together. I think it was Joanne who asked him, finally, if he had anything special to show us today. We knew that he'd been working on something that, while this was the first time we'd seen him in person in a while, we would both spoke to him on the phone in the preceding months and he eagerly explained to us that he was working on something that thought would be quite extraordinary. I still couldn't tell you he how he made them, nor what if I could, nor could I tell you what his original idea for those oddly colored circles of glass had been before that fateful day he looked through them and seen what he'd seen. He never shared details of his work with us beforehand as he went it to be, he wanted it to be a surprise and afterwards. I think he was just terrified of the thought of anyone replicating what he had made. All I know is that when Joanne pressed him to reveal his latest invention, he looked nervous in a way that i never seen him before. Look as he was deeply troubled by something. He hesitated before speaking, as if he was not sure to sh if he should say anything at all before explaining to us the nature of that what he was working on had changed after an unusual event and that he wasn't sure if it would be a good idea to show the end of the result. Now, we may have grown since the days when we could perch on his knee, but whether someone is two years old or in their twenties, the surest way to make them want something all the more is to tell them they can have it. So his reluctance, which at the time I'm sure we both thought was feigned to hide in the suspense before the unveiling, just made us both want to see his invention more than ever. With a little persuading, he agreed and left to fetch it. He came back a few moments later with what appeared to be a pair of glasses, with one big difference. The Lindas were like no glasses I've ever seen before. I can't even describe the color of it without resorting to words like reddish or, or, or greenish, uh, as they didn't seem to be exactly any color that we had had a name for. In fact, they didn't seem to be exactly any one color at all. It was if you tilted them one way, they would look different into if you tilted them the other. I know full well that probably sounds more like magic than something a well-meaning old man could put together with his own hands in a little workshop, but there you have it. Joan asked what they did, and our grandfather paused for a few moments, as if not quite certain how to answer. In the end, he told us that he really had to put on them on of ourselves, and he was certain neither of us would believe in him if he told us. Joanne to put on them first, but as she lifted them on the table, he reached out and grabbed her hands. He cautioned her that it might be startling at first, but that she wasn't in any danger, and that if she got frightened, she could just take off them. He warned her that if she was just about to see, may not, sorry, 
that she was about to see may not take any more sense than in her that it did him but that all oh my god the wine is not starting to make it <laughs> sorry it's okay to him. but that you were all and that she was safe i could tell joanne i was a little frightened she was always lousy and hitting how she felt from people and even i was feeling a bit unsettled by her grandfather being so uncharacteristic and characteristically ominous about her whole thing Joanne slipped the glasses on the on and we waited. She gasped and then for the next few moments she looked puzzled more than anything. Her lips moved wordlessly and I thought I caught a no, that's not right. Under her breath as she seemed to look under at something none of us could see and then she began screaming. I don't know if you ever heard someone scream in a horror in real life. I can promise you this. It's not like in the movies. The movies do not convey the awful sound of someone you love screaming their lungs out, making a noise more like an animal than a human being. They cannot make you feel the things they felt in that moment, watching Joan yank the glasses from her head and hurl them across the room. And nothing could have ever prepared us for the sight of Joanne beginning to claw at our own eyes, screaming louder than anyone should be able to scream as she did it. It, it took all three of us to restrain her at first. When we had pinned her down so she couldn't hurt herself anymore, Justine and my grandfather held her that way while I called for an ambulance. I had to watch as she was strapped down and wheeled into the back of one, thrashing and hissing and shrieking like some mad animal, like something utterly consumed by fear. I explained what had happened, knowing full well how it made me sound. Justine and I explained the series of events that led to this to the spectacle, if not totally disbelieving hospital staff, and then to the specialists called in when nothing short of being tranquilized proven ineffective or proven effective at stopping my sister from trying to hurt herself while screaming like that. The glasses had supposedly gone missing which made proving that it had happened difficult. And it wasn't until almost a year long, uh, a year later, long after my sister has been committed, that my grandfather finally confessed to me that he destroyed them. I don't know if having them could have helped, could have given the doctor some way to make these things right. I doubt it somehow, and I can truly blame him for doing what he did. Given that it was an act born of guilt, out of guilt and an, an honest desire to make sure that this didn't happen again. I asked him what my sister had seen that day when he told me what he'd done. I asked what those glasses had done to her. He hadn't wanted to talk about it. And for the first time in my life, I'd raised my voice to him, angrily demanding to know. After all this time, just what had driven my sister to the state? What had affected her so deeply? so profoundly that she was no longer even recognizable as the person I'd grown up with. He took me to his workshop and began digging around through the bits and pieces that littered the place, the half-finished and now long-discarded inventions still awaiting completion. He produced two pieces of glass rather like the ones that had been fitted into glasses. He told me that there wasn't any way to describe it without sounding insane. That if I had to know, then I had to see. But he begged me not to do this. That knowing wouldn't make things any better. He was right. I, I held the glasses up to my face, and in an instant, everything changed. Instead of just my grandfather stood before me, now there were dozens more in the room with us. But they weren't people. They were pale and emaciated, hunched over and dressed in dark clothing with black whips and wide lidless eyes, and it seemed almost bulged from their eyed skulls in a manner both comical and horrifying all at once. Their mouths were full of hundreds of tiny teeth like needles. Their fingers were grotesque, long and end in the dark and the viciously pointed nails that scraped along the floor as they walked, and all of them were talking and rather their lips were moving soundlessly. 
Each of every one of them was trying to say something that couldn't be heard. Dozens of dozens of voices trying to convey of something. I dropped the glasses to the ground in shock, and my grandfather brought his foot down on them hard, grinding them to a powder beneath his foot. Muttering that he should have done this in the first place, he put an arm on my shoulder, asking if I was alright. I was far from alright, and he had been correct. What had I seen had made things worse, not better. It took me a while to work it out, of course. Why this had such a horrifying effect on my sister, and yet I had survived the experience, writing, but not sporting the mental scars it had given her. The glasses only let me see the creatures. I couldn't hear what they were trying to say to me. I couldn't understand the message they were trying to impart. But my sister was dead. She could read their lips. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> Guys, it's getting harder for me to read. Spooky! The... <laughs> when the paragraphs are too long, the the um, the letters are so tiny and white and i don't know what i am anymore i'm like oops maybe i shouldn't have started drinking i don't know baby is drunk it makes it fun ladies and gentlemen baby gets drunk with two glasses that's not news anymore maybe we should karaoke <laughs> karaoke yeah. uh oh zarek he's here listening to some stories hope you're doing better zarek Spooky stories. Spooky. Spooky. Let me see if I have any spooky emote. Do you have? <laughs> I have a spooky emote. Where's my face? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the only spooky one I have is the ghost. I'm trying to find a nice short one so we can wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, here we go. I don't know if really I can read one. anymore. Yeah, no, with small fight. paragraphs, please. Yeah. Here we go. Six one. through three minutes, boys and girls. Let's do it. What the <laughs> fuck? No. That's short. No, no, no. Get this. We've been reading ones with the max of like 13 minutes. Six three minutes is so, too much. So imagine if we read that one, we'd be here for like two hours. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, I'll be here for two days. I can't read anymore. <laughs> Yeah, and then I'll be asleep. Shit. <laughs> I'm trying to find some short ones. There should be a section for like short Just put stories. some karaoke. That's it. Karaoke. Okay, 10 minutes. Not bad. That's too long. It's not too long. Yeah, put one up. It's <laughs> not too, too long. Oh, Long Johnson. Does anyone know what that is? No. You've never seen that one cat? Or like any cat when they're no. like upset and they like meow but they like talk to and they're like no 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 no. Yeah. So fun. there was a cat that was like on American Funniest Videos and I guess it was scared and it was like doing that cat talk thing. Ah, oh, and oh my god, this one has huge paragraphs. Look, I can't read this. Did you see the the size of the paragraphs? Oh my god! Yeah, you should make another what one. What the? It's not even the size of the paragraphs. It's the small space between each Just line Google that makes short, me. Creepy pastas. Those are really short. Those are like five paragraphs. Micro pastas. All right, well, you choose a micro pasta for us, but I'm telling you, they're like like three paragraphs long. At most. And baby is drunk. Baby, are you drunk? This is not that long. Two minutes. We'll s Maybe if I take the light out, just, I read better. I don't know. It's just starting to be rough. It's like all the, the black and white together. I don't know. Well, we don't want to kill you, babe. And maybe the, the black, the white, and the red wine all together. Not necessarily in order. In that order. Not necessarily. I think if it would be Portuguese, I would do the same. What'd you say, Anarchy? I said I found a short one. The sleepwalker. You want me to find one in Portuguese? 
Um, I would. You couldn't read that one. I was about to say I could. Spooky one in Portuguese. I was about to say I could do my best to try to read that, but I wouldn't understand whatever is going on. <laughs> oh, that's short. <laughs> Like I, you wanted a short one. I I told y'all micro pastas are short as fuck. Like that's. Listen, either you want a short one or you're gonna be reading forever. The choice is your. J Pot said short one, typical. Wow, babe. You like? Uh, okay, I'm gonna shut up. Look, I got another one too, so we can do the sleepwalker. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. So we can do the sleepwalker. Why are you laughing? And then right after that, mm -hmm. we can do this one. And then we'll call it. Oh my god. Okay. You call it. My part is just starting. Wow. So, which we will uh, we will do the one from Monarchy yes, first? Yes, we'll do the sleepwalker first. Okay. Uh, I'll take the first paragraph. Baby can have the second. Anarchy can close it. Okay. All right. I gotta wait for the dramatic. But ooh, I love this one. Yeah. Actually, 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 I want you guys to listen to this story with the music. So if you have the stream pulled up, you can just like mute the uh, the chat. I'll read this one. How's that? And then y'all can help me on the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Read this one. I like I like the music. It adds so much more when you hear the music with it. So I'll mute the uh, the steam. Yeah, I'll mute steam and I'll be right it's back. It's not spooky enough. Your screen is scary. I have to click. <laughs> <laughs> Poor promise. All right. Is everyone in the chat room? Did you make it in, baby? Are you in the chat? Okay, cool. All right. So this story is called The Sleepwalker. And I'll read it without, hopefully, without any any uh, jumbled up words. If I do, I'm usually good at, like, improvision. And then I'll just, like, make up words that sound good. <laughs> All right, here we go. I have dreamed more than one that a man may attain immortality by... Hold on. Woo! That's a big word, boys. <laughs> a si hold on, wait, 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 hold on. I don't want to fuck this one up. We already, we already jacked this up. Hold on. How, how do you say that? Assiduously. Holy Jesus. With great care and perse perseverance. Assiduously. Holy that's a big word. Yeah. <laughs> I have dreamed more than once that a man may obtain immortali immortality by assiduously avoiding daylight, for it is only by the light of the sun that he ages. Knowing this secret, one might go on living undefiantly. Only a few hundred people in the entire world take advantage of this arcane knowledge. Moving an anonymously by night among the larger cities and actively shun the attention of those who would expose them to the curiosity, or worse, of the masses. If you have seen one of these extraordinary beings, it was without knowing it, of course. There, at the periphery of your view, one evening, at and out of the way tavern, eyes have shut, cigarettes dangling from shadow, shadowy lips. Swing the charge before him on the bar into the pocket just as you arrive. You didn't consciously mark him as he shuffled out of sight with the show or with the slow determination of a sleepwalker. But something in you did note him. And his memory returned so quickly and sharply because of this. Now that you acknowledge you have seen him, study what little remains to you. 
his peculiar slouch for you will never see this individual again or rather he will never let you see him no matter where you search through the blurred end of the night he will always have left a few steps ahead of you leaving behind some ashes a drained bottle next to the susly glass a layer of smoke on the sterigan air his will be the joke at which the nodding drinker still laugh but you will never hear his voice that was a weird story it wasn't scary anarchy i blame you <laughs> anarchy that was gross that was a terrible story the sleepwalker ew wasn't scary at all what what about his nipples right what about the nipples what about the nipples what about the nipples j-pot's dirty j-pot's not dirty he's clean he just washed his clothes all right i'll do this last one hold on let me let me make sure it's creepy Okay, cool. I can do this one. Um, again, I want to uh, I want to thank Baby and Anarchy for helping me read these stories. It's been an hour and like almost thirty minutes already, so I won't hold them hostage for any longer. But I appreciate both of them being here. I'm gonna read this last story. That was Anarchy dropping out. It's okay, Baby. You can drop out too if you want. Wow. Yeah, I'm kicking y'all off. How can he just hang up on us? Anarchy's got to build some cars, BB. He's just say you, you hold me up from building my cars. She said, I got to get my mechanic on. All right. Nah, son, you got to hit me with the good ones. I gotta find a good one, hold on. Yeah! Alright, I got it. <laughs> FBI! FBI, open up! Go crazy! Ah, 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 go stupid! Ah, ah, ah. Go crazy! All right, here we go. Last story of the night, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, men, women of all shapes and sizes. Appreciate everyone being here tonight. Last story, and then I'm going to end the stream. I have no idea who to host because nobody's on. Nobody. 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 So if anyone um, has any suggestions, go ahead and let me know. Um, and then we can host them up after this. Okay, so the last story is titled, My Haunting Past. Hopefully I can read this without many, many slip up of words. I'm going to drink some soda real quick. I've always had trouble sleeping at night. Noises, noises have disturbed me my whole life. I found out years ago that I have a hypersensitive hearing, picking up all sorts of background noises. They couldn't fix it. Only recommended the obvious techniques to mask the problem. Not that I hadn't tried these already. Earmuffs, listening to music, even things like meditation none of it worked. In fact, it seemed to make it worse. It made her more desperate. I hear her most nights. No one else can. Why does she only come to me? 
There's always the dread of lying there each night in dark silence, anticipating when she'll come. And when I will hear her again, she usually likes to wait until I'm drifting to sleep so that I jump back to my senses in front of the sound of her there. Most of the night, it begins with faint crying. She tells me that she wants to make it end. I, I know she's getting closer to getting me, and, and some nights I can even feel her cold breath in my ear. I, I can sense when she is lying close beside me, in, in darkness staring at me, and sometimes she whispers things like, It's only me. Right into my ear. She's toying with me, like a cat does to a helpless insect before killing it. The thing is, I could never see her, but it slowly felt like she was becoming more real. The doctor later informed me that I suffer from schizophrenia. I've been ta taking medications for a long time, but it wasn't really working. It, it just made me feel more helpless. It was difficult for a girl as young as me to deal with this. At least now, I could accept that she wasn't real. It was all in my head, and there was nothing real to be afraid of. That was until last night. Last night, her presence felt more real than ever. I, I could hear her whisper, feel air on my neck, and even smell her breath. It, it was all too realistic to handle. I got so scared that I fell back into my old habit of running through the darkness of the house into my mother's bed to sleep beside her where I felt safe. Now that I was older, I knew she was hoping I had grown out of this phase. Although I had only stopped doing it because it made her sad and I didn't want her to be disappointed in me anymore. She was all I had. If I had the choice, I would be in there beside her every night without fail. I knew my mother had been awoken by me, probably more saddened that I had reverted to the old ways when she thought the medication had been helping me. But it wasn't helping. I had just lied all this time to keep her happy and let her sleep in peace. I, I curled up in bed beside her and began to sob quietly. My mom looked uncomfortable from the noises I had made and began stirring under the sheets so whispering into my ear. It's only me. She sat up abruptly, looking anxious. In the darkness, I saw her reach over for her cell phone and began to dial the number. I noticed on the screen that she was calling the doctor. The voices I used to hear she said, they're back. Okay, a little, little psychological on that one. Okay, all right, that was, that was pretty straight. That was pretty good. Hope everyone enjoyed that one. Did you check under your bed? Oh, gee, where? Ah! Little voices in your head scared them. So I want to try to do these every Friday. Time to be determined. Um, whoever wants to join me at those, feel free to do so. If not, then y'all can come in here and listen to me read. But I appreciate it everyone being here i appreciate you jay pod for that raid and bringing some people up in here thank you baby distorted anarchy for being here Zarek, promise um i don't believe i missed anyone else that was chatting forbidden echoes was here from j pod stream neo was here awesome sauce and the ghosts Thank you, Ghost, for making everything scary. This is an amazing short story by Richard Matheson about a guy going crazy in his head, and it frightened you. So we should definitely do that one, J-Pod. We should definitely read stuff like that. But our... Right, that's a weird emote. 
swag prime what is that prime time pantamine pantamine i don't know paint me paint me duh all right um well i don't really have anyone to host j pod do you have anyone to host because i don't know anybody i'm a pleb Serena's playing Dead by Daylight. Can somebody link her channel? See, so, like, I don't any, I don't know anybody that's on. I know Ape Fist. He's on. I know Pug. Kitty Chips. I don't know anybody else. Serene. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate each and every single one of you. We're going to go host over Serene. This is my December, but actually September because she's not December. Serene September. All right. Y'all have a beautiful Sunday night. Love y'all. You all. Y'all. Bye-bye. Where's the karaoke? The karaoke's will be sometime this week. Stop in. We'll we'll do some Twitch thing. All right. Uh, good night, everybody. Host a raid. Host a raid. Host a raid. Raid. We'll do the raid. Boom, boom, doop, boom, doop. I gotta go wash my clothes. I gotta go wash my clothes. Peace out, everybody. Boom.